start in node one and work backwards today because the service module will be uh, deep in the throes of cabling for the meme dwa. So uh, we'll start there and then uh, we'll move to the front of the station. In node one, you can see here our galley table is set up and uh, there's two uh, straps right here holding it rigidly and bungees down on the bottom holding it uh, a little bit more springily and uh, it's in its uh, half folded configuration it folds up against the side there flat and it folds out across the node to accommodate everybody the uh, hatch as you can see is unimpeded by the table and a quick circumferential view of the hatch which i think was asked for and uh, PMA-1, we have uh, started to burn down a lot of the supplies here. And uh, it's actually looking pretty good, believe it or not, that narrow tunnel. And uh, here we go now on to the FGB. Now I'll make a note that uh, Gennady has uh, just gone to Herculean efforts to clean up the FGB, uh, stow things, get rid of things, and uh, I would say that it's not looked better than this for an awfully long time. Uh, we had to uh, add another layer here for the EVAs and put uh, other Orlon suits up here. These, of course, are now uh, back in the uh, SO Adin, and uh, the FGB is looking great. It's still a huge amount of stowage, and anything stored in a plane one is very difficult to access. There was a, a question about the Patok location in the FGB. Here it is. Um, it's uh, been moved in a very convenient location after the uh, Risto uh, activities after the EVAs. And uh, down here we have, of course, several Yedeves, disassembled KTOs. And a, a quick look down at the docking compartment. There are uh, several Orlons down there, but uh, the way they're stowed, uh, it's actually very uh, convenient and still a usable volume down there. So uh, just packing is everything. And of course, uh, our Soyuz 18S is down there. And uh, moving into the service module, Gennady and Roman are hard at work photographing Europe. And the service module is looking uh, very clean these days. <laughs> you are paying our compliment, Mike. Absolutely right. Now, uh, moving back uh, forward through uh, the service module, um, again, uh, there's been really major efforts to uh, clean things up in here and uh, the service module is a very clean module right now. Uh, the galley table, we take uh, breakfast here and lunch here typically and uh, reserve dinner for the U.S. segment. And service module uh, walls, planes uh, two and four have been uh, massively cleaned and tidied. And uh, we'll go ahead and move back forward now. Here again you get a view of uh, the FGB and how much uh, flyway there is now compared to what there used to be. This is the uh, hygiene station which is uh, something all the crew members used at first. Uh, now uh, just uh, Gennady and Roman are using this and the uh, US segment guys are pretty much using the WHC and uh, this is working out uh, fairly well. And of course the uh, FGB and uh, down here is the uh, 19S Soyuz down in the depths. Coming out again through the PMA and the light at the end of the tunnel. And now we'll uh, try to play uh, or pay a particular attention to uh, stowage areas. 
And in particular, this is the, uh, there we go, the uh, node one, uh, Nader hatch area. Uh, we still have uh, leftover Tevis items in here from the uh, maintenance that we did. And then uh, looking starboard along the, uh, the hatch area is uh, a collection of CWCs. And of course, uh, behind the A red, the port hatch, pretty much nothing is stowed there because of the dynamic envelope of the A red. And uh, let's take a look overhead. So the uh, zenith hatch area, we had done a lot of uh, pre-staging of trash here before the last progress, and uh, this area is, of course, I think slated for a stowage for a 17A. Uh, there is uh, quite a bit of potential stowage area up here. And just as a note, when we do stow a lot of things up here, uh, we lose some of the ventilation, we lose some of the lighting, and uh, where we uh, have to be careful, again, with the uh, A-red dynamic envelope, but uh, it does uh, swallow a lot of cargo there. Now, looking at the uh, Node 1 forward area, we see Koichi Wakata, the hero of Japan. And uh, to highlight some of the stowage, on the uh, starboard side uh, here, we have a uh, CTB behind there, a jettison stowage bag with uh, pre-trash uh, gather items. And uh, on the port side, uh, you see more CTBs. We've reported that these actually do cover some fire ports, and I think that's well known. The uh, PFE is, uh, is accessible on the port side there, but it takes a little while. So there you can see stowage pretty much along the port side. The green mesh bags you see here, here, and on uh, either side, these are the uh, U.S. segment uh, crew members' athletic bags. Uh, we keep uh, Tevis harnesses, tennis shoes, sweat towels, and things like that in here. And uh, looking into the airlock, and a quick look around the hatch. Hatches are in very good shape. We do uh, kind of inspect the hatches uh, in a cursory fashion once a day or so and do quick fly-throughs uh, looking at hatches and excursions and uh, anything that might be stuck in the fan filters. It's been a lot of work in uh, pre-EVA tool gathering configuration, getting ready for uh, 2JA, and uh, the airlock in general is uh, looking pretty good and uh, pretty ready for the uh, 2JA guys to get here. The uh, crew lock is uh, full of tools, and many workstations are all configured and ready to go. Okay, now we'll uh, move into the lab. And a quick look at the uh, hatch seal around. And it's a little dark in here, but I think you can get an idea that the uh, hatch is pretty unencumbered. And I will highlight the fact for the stowage guys that uh, we do have some food deployed up here. Uh, we've been marking that in the database as uh, Node 1, Starboard uh, 1. And um, we uh, turn this over uh, similar to uh, what we do in the uh, service module here. Uh, typically, we eat dinner as a crew uh, down here in Node 1, and uh, a lot of this is rehydratable. And, uh, of course, we're using our PWD for that. We're moving into uh, the lab now, the U.S. lab. And uh, notably uh, the RWS over here and uh, SSCs on either side of it, eight on the left, five on the right. I'll get a quick look at those for those who might be interested in the uh, robotics ops coming up. We've uh, done several robotic operations uh, in Expedition 19, and uh, those worked out very well with this arrangement, using the SSC-5 as a uh, procedure machine, and SSC-8 over here as a dug machine. 
and looking back quickly at the uh, hatch arrangement see the hatch is clear I think it's been reported several times that the uh, quarter turn fasteners uh, don't seem to work uh, so well especially if they're in an area that's accessed frequently um, several of them uh, break in their catches and as you can see the uh, PBA uh, hatch over here just over the uh, PFE port uh, there's four of those uh, fasteners are gone and uh, we have to be careful because opening the PBA port here uh, against the velcro inside uh, would impede the PFE coming out so um, that's just something for us to be mindful of and uh, we keep our Tevis, and, uh, Tevis cards up here just above the mech so that it's convenient for us to come in and get them read after Tevis exercise and in the uh, mech and then put them back. For uh, stowage guys, again, we've reported the location of the uh, food warmer. I think we've sent a video down about that as well, but uh, here again is where we keep the uh, U.S. food warmer. And the uh, Cupola robotic workstation. And uh, as far as uh, any other dynamic stowage goes, this is our pre-staging area for uh, 2JA, the uh, lab overhead three location. It's fairly packed right now with uh, items ready for uh, the uh, 127 crew. It was a, a good location. I think it's worked out well for us. We could probably uh, stuff a little bit more in there, mostly CTBs, ECOX, JSPs, and as you can see, there's some uh, food containers there all bundled up and ready to go. The uh, Deck 3 area is uh, still taken up by the Ag Cam, so our uh, window constraints really don't have too much meaning to us. The uh, Ag Cam window requirements are uh, pretty much dictating the lab window activity, and uh, actually, the Ag Cam has had a problem that hasn't worked quite uh, yet, so. Uh, we're not using that too much. A uh, quick uh, time to highlight the water wall in the uh, starboard two area. Uh, Bob and Frank did an IFM here on the task list to try to get the uh, water wall away from the SIR rack, and I think that's been fairly successful. Uh, bungee cords are uh, trying to keep that uh, uh, from impacting the wall. There's, uh, it looks like there's one against there, but uh, we'll fix that. And we do uh, periodically reorient these to get them uh, off the SIR rack. Now, concentrating uh, for a time in the Lab 1 area, um, the TESS, which is now inhabited uh, by Frank, one of the quieter places on the station. And the uh, OGS rack, um, which we have reported several times before, this is a very busy area that uh, was not supposed to have stowage on it, but of course we have the Altia on there. Um, we do have an SSC here, which uh, Frank uses office-wise, and if we have the uh, BCAT payload set up, then we use it here. Um, the OCA router is also situated here, and it's a bit of a, a mass of cabling. It is a, a trafficked area. The WHC is here, so uh, we are looking for some alternate locations and they're suggesting a location in Columbus. Uh, we'd like not to put the BCAT back here. And a quick uh, look at the hatch area. We've uh, rigged a little uh, seat track stud and a Velcro arrangement to uh, keep this uh, PBA hatch more or less closed. Uh, tape wasn't working out so well for us, but again, the quarter turn fasteners have uh, not worked too well for us there, and those have been taken off. Okay, uh, continuing on, we're uh, in node two now. I want to show the uh, hatch here. Looking aft from node two. Again, uh, we do kind of look at our hatch surfaces uh, at least once a day during a fly-through, making sure that there's nothing on the fan inlets and uh, hatches are clear and no drag-throughs. We do that pretty much once in the uh, morning and uh, more detail once at night. Uh, the mesh bag you see here is our dirty laundry staging area. Uh, power strips down here on the starboard side and uh, the fan uh, inlet here, which we uh, find things in every once in a while. We do a lot of our PAO work here, so we have a video camera set up uh, with a, a small a computer desk we use for uh, holding any scripting. Uh, the overhead hatch area, and uh, we'll pay particular attention. We've reported this a couple of times too, but I think there's still been some questions. 
Uh, we have the Emergency One book up here in the uh, port area. We also have one of the monovacumeters from the Russian side. Uh, the one that's uh, typically used at the uh, Central Post for reporting differs from this one by about uh, one and one half millimeters. This one reading a little bit lower. And um, the uh, other question uh, I think was concerning stowage. And so in the uh, Node 2 uh, Deck 5 area, you can see we do have some stowage here. It's actually not very much. It's a fairly uh, deep pit. Uh, we were using it for uh, empty CTBs here, and uh, we've used most of those for um, 2JA prepack. Uh, you will see a couple of uh, bonus food containers that some of us keep uh, deployed here just to grab uh, snacks out of and things like that uh, rather than running down to the Russian segment. These are also uh, marked in the database. We have uh, one KBO down here, and uh, those are in fairly short supply right now on station, so we're using that fairly exclusively for uh, unusual things uh, such as medical trash. And uh, pivoting around, this is uh, the workstation on the port side. Port crew quarters, port side uh, workstation. Uh, this is something that uh, I use, uh, but also other crew members use just for uh, supplies and uh, grabbing uh, stickies and pens and things like that. Uh, power strips and charging below. And uh, my work SSC. And the uh, starboard side workstation, uh, similar, kind of used uh, by Koichi, but also by everybody. There's some uh, temp stowed tools here that we use frequently. And overhead so other things that uh, the uh, crew preference items uh, as they're marking the database uh, show us as okay uh, continuing along here um, node to a uh, deck 5 storage area let's turn on a little bit of supplemental light which uh, the high def cameras like um, we do have uh, the one big uh, mid deck stowage bag here and uh, again uh, a few CWCs uh, but there is obviously a lot of potential for stowage down here. Uh, we've reported that we're short of these bungees, and uh, we really are. We need these for stowing in some of the big uh, radial hatch areas, so I think we've got some of those coming up on 2JA. And another uh, area that might be a little bit uh, un underutilized is the uh, end cone area in the Node 2. Um, we uh, could stow a few more things here. Obviously, during a shuttle mission, uh, it would be a little bit difficult. It is a thoroughfare, uh, but uh, it is a, an area that uh, we could use, and we'd sometimes use for staging now. I will point out the uh, two uh, food containers. These are Russian food containers and are listed as discarded, uh, but we have uh, put the backup IFM tools, the IFM spare tools, into these two containers and uh, organized them somewhat, and we actually do use these uh, fairly frequently. Uh, either because we have tasks simultaneously or uh, because we just uh, can't necessarily find something out of the regular IFM kit. We're trying to be uh, fairly ginchy about putting things back uh, when we're done with them, uh, but there's just a lot of people up here using tools, which is what you expect with a six-person crew. And the uh, Node 2 forward hatch area, the flag area, we use this as a backdrop for uh, PAO events again, our venerable ship's bell, and... Uh, the uh, big CTB floating here is our Ziploc pantry, which we're uh, into uh, fairly frequently. Now a quick look at the overhead. Again, uh, quite a bit of potential stowage area, and I know that uh, for uh, 17A uh, that will be uh, fairly heavily utilized. We have a little bit of a bungee net up there. This is where we typically dry our clothes, and uh, some of our water reclamation is done up here too. The uh, ventilation here is quite good, so we try to make use of that the best we can. But that should give you a pretty good idea of the uh, stowage potential up there. And moving quickly into the gem, still the tidiest, largest, quietest module we have here. It's a pleasure to work in here anytime. <clears throat> and you can see fairly minimal stowage on the walls here. We'll pause for a pause for a quick moment here and show. Um, Bob's uh, sleep station. Bob has been our uh, displaced refugee without a uh, sleep quarters of his own, but uh, he's made very good use of uh, this location. And uh, we have the water wall behind there, which we've set up to give Bob some radiation protection and, of course, as a bit of a standoff uh, to protect the shell heaters back there. And uh, this is all empty space. 
behind there in the forward two location and uh, looking up in the uh, empty bay here you see a uh, soft stowage Japanese style with the uh, the straps up there which actually are working out very nicely they're very easy to access and uh, we have no problem getting stowage from up here okay and a, a quick look back at the uh, hatch area the gem port hatch area very clean very accessible moving port SSC 14 over here which uh, is wireless and we like to use for our conferences it allows us to uh, fly the camera around a little bit and to give people a, a fly through of the station during our video conferences which is very nice and we do have uh, a little bit of stowage over here after the uh, airlock and uh, potentially forward i think crew members have slept at both of these locations before and of course this is an area we use uh, also for pao and uh, for uh, some of our photo events because we have the magnificent window behind there and looking up into the jlp um, I think you're probably aware that we do have one of our EMUs stowed in here. It makes things much easier to uh, work in the uh, airlock. And uh, some of these bags are actually empty that we have up here. The uh, 3.0 CTB here is, is empty. We had found uh, food containers in that. We moved those to Columbus Forward 3 in an effort to try to consolidate all of our food. As the other EMU that was already uh, stowed up here the uh, robot uh, trainer and uh, Bob has also been using this as kind of a, a private area for uh, cleaning or for uh, hanging laundry and uh, uh, dressing so uh, that's JLP uh, obviously just right now very loose stowage uh, but uh, a lot of potential here and uh, you can see we have a couple of ecocks here I think uh, these are mine and Gennady's just uh, floating and back down we go I will make uh, one note that um, we're checking Koichi I don't think so but we'll look into it thanks Jay we've had uh, food stowed in so many different locations including obscure panels in the FGB and uh, as well as the FGB floor uh, Columbus Forward 3 hey, here in the JPM up in the JLP and uh, we worked pretty hard to try to consolidate that in um, well, let's see behind uh, this panel which is the uh, aft 5 in uh, in gem there's actually quite a bit of food in 3.0 CTB containers I believe we have about 50 containers in there still uh, some of those are expedition 18 Russian food containers and uh, we're going to uh, go into Columbus quick note that we have the uh, the WAP stored up here and uh, into Columbus working module and Dr. Thursk is working hard today and uh, we'll first uh, swivel around since we're talking about the hatches and the uh, Columbus port hatch ring unencumbered seals in good shape see the ATU and the headset unit there and uh, we've reported in the past that the uh, hard shell covers for the PFAs and PBEs in here uh, a don't seem to fit and B don't seem to uh, protect and uh, if anything they might be a little bit more in the way than than uh, helpful and uh, we might uh, be looking for some alternatives there for uh, storage I think probably the only thing you really need covered is that uh, PBA there and perhaps or I'm sorry the uh, the magic mask itself and perhaps the uh, top of the PBA but uh, otherwise uh, these are low traffic areas and uh, fairly safe and with regard to stowage 
Um, the only thing uh, that we would consider soft and dynamic stowage in here is probably the uh, Columbus Forward 3 area. We have reported that uh, we've tried to consolidate our food rations here as much as possible. So right now we are stored in the uh, JPM where I showed you before and here in Columbus Forward 3 as well as the FGB and uh, no other locations besides deployed. We have had a beta cloth cover on here, but since we access this quite frequently, uh, we've just used the bungee trap here, and that's worked for us quite well. As you can see, there's still uh, quite a bit of Expedition 18 uh, Russian food here. There's uh, On this date of uh, June uh, 18th, we still have about uh, 17 or 18 uh, containers here, and then a few more in uh, JPM, so we're still not quite done burning down the uh, Expedition 18 containers. Uh, but this area does uh, serve as a very good uh, staging area for food. It's uh, easily accessed and uh, easily uh, reorganized as needed. And looking very quickly at the uh, starboard end cone, some uh, storage here beneath the uh, power bus distribution and the caution warning panel. Same issue with the uh, PBA covers and the uh, PFE covers here in the end cone. Uh, not too helpful, but uh, this is a very low trafficked area. This happens to be our recommended location for uh, setting up BCAT again uh, over here in this area, which again uh, is uh, very low traffic and uh, certainly nobody lives here. And I think that uh, maintaining access to the emergency equipment would be quite simple. This also fulfills the BCAT's requirement to be oriented in the uh, X axis in general. So uh, that is Columbus. Turn around and uh, Get a panoramic view of the module from here. There is a lot of uh, science going on here now, so uh, we actually have a lot of uh, temp stow on the walls compared to usual. Usually uh, the walls here are fairly clean. And uh, we will notice that uh, we, we have uh, the large bag here uh, stowed on the deck, which is from the ATV and ATV equipment. Uh, this is probably a very good staging area for large bags during uh, STS-127 that we can get them uh, straight in the door relieve the mid-deck of their um, uh, big stowage burden with the big bags and uh, just uh, pre-stage them here without messing up the works too much in Columbus. Uh, Columbus remains a very functional module uh, even with the big stowage on the deck there. And I think that wraps up uh, what uh, people wanted to see with regard to hatchways and uh, stowage and uh, of course our uh, look in the Russian segment. And while we're coming through here, we'll just take another view of the um, Node 2, Deck 2 area. Again, uh, a fairly cavernous volume with a very nice window view. We sometimes uh, we take it for granted, but uh, we often uh, do our phone calling strung from the bungees overhead here and uh, looking out the window below. It's a, it's a very nice view. And this, of course, is where the Earth Cam uh, payload is deployed. So a stowage here would, of course, uh, preclude that payload from being deployed here.